you. Good afternoon, church family. Uh, good to be here, as always. <laughs> oh, thank you. That was that was so beautiful. Thank you, my sister Adida. I wish we could next next year. Next year, we're every every week we're gonna have something every day, maybe. <laughs> Next year, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I have been pleasantly, uh, I've been pleased uh, with the more rain that we've, we've been getting recently. And with, with the rain, I have been pleasantly surprised to see more rainbows, like actual rainbows here. I, it was amazing. So I wanna start just by showing some pictures of the glory of God that I've witnessed here just like in Glendora and in, in Duarte, yeah, um, and, and in Claremont too. Um, so the day after I was commissioned, I saw this outside my window. And I had, I think it was like the next day that my devotional prayer book had me read what Megan just read. And at first I was like, I was, I was like, it was like raining, and then the sun kind of came out a little bit. And I was like, oh, there's probably a rainbow somewhere. And but like, oh, I don't, and then I don't know, the spirit told me to open my window, and I was just, <gasps> so I, I had to grab my phone and take a picture. So this was the day on January 22nd, the day after my commissioning. And then uh, about a week, uh, over a week later on February 2nd, on the way home, I was dri I'm driving east from uh, the graveside service for Drummer Smith. Um, uh, Fred uh, of uh, officiated that, that uh, graveside service for our dear brother Drummer Smith. And on the way home from that service, I saw, I saw a double rainbow on the, way, uh, on the way. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure it's a double rainbow. You see it? <laughs> So that's, that's all. Oh, well, I'm on the 210 going east to, back to Claremont. And I, you can go to the next one. Um, it was so clear. It was, it's so beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Next. It was, I was just, I'm, and thankfully the, the traffic was slow enough, so I was able to, like, you know, take my pictures <laughs> safely, you know, without, um, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> next, next. <laughs> is, there, is there another one? Is there another one, right? Yeah, I think. Is, is there, is there, is that, is that it for the rainbow? Okay, okay. So what is a rainbow? According to the National Geographic Society, <laughs> a rainbow is a multicolored arc by light striking water droplets. The most familiar type of rainbow is produced when sunlight strikes raindrops in front of a viewer at a precise angle. The colors on a primary rainbow are always in order of their wavelength, from longest to shortest. So the longest is, is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. And if, if you're able to show, like, keep a picture in the, in the corner for the, of the rainbow, that'd be great. So what does a rainbow mean in the Bible? Let's read it. Let's read. So let's read it again, even though we just heard it. <laughs> well, part, part of it. So Genesis 9, I'll start from verse 8. This is very hot. Um, then God said, okay, so what, all right, what, what just happened? So God, God created everything <laughs> and, and all, you know, the, the, the land, the, the sea, the, uh, the, the, the birds of the air, the, um, the, the creatures on the land, and then he made humans in his image. image. And then he commanded the humans to spread, spread, spread all over the, all over the, the earth because God wants his, his purpose for creating is not only because of his own goodness and his creativity and awesomeness, but he wants his image to cover the earth, and maybe even the whole cosmos. But starting on planet Earth, he wants his image to spread. He wants his image. Uh, and then he, but then he gives the humans a choice. He gives the humans a choice to trust in God's wisdom 
or to trust in their own wisdom. And what do the humans choose? Their own, their own wisdom. To define good and evil on my own terms, and that introduces sin into our story, but we still see the, the effects of sin. Sin is the inward turning of the human heart that has been seemingly permanent all throughout human history. The automatic inclination from birth to focus on me, myself, and I. One of the first words that a child will say is mine. Mine, <laughs> everything's mine, right? Uh, and then as we get older, we, it's again, that inclination to, to say that I, everything that I want is for me and my tribe, even at the expense of you and your tribe. And that started wars and death and violence, and, and we see that throughout the whole biblical story. But then God, and so um, at, at some point, God is, is grieved because every single human being ha has only evil in, in their heart. All, the, all their thoughts or inclinations are evil, and God is grieved. God is grieved, and well, many of us are familiar with the story. But God, God in his grace, I believe, provides someone like Noah who knows God and loves God, and through him, through his family, provides salvation, provides a new way of living, a new creation to live and out into eternity. That's the whole entire Bible. Anyways, so I'm just trying to... So the image of God, God's purpose for creating is for his image to spread everywhere. His creativity, his goodness, his character reflected out into the world. Okay, so and then, so um, he, in his mercy, God provides, God wipes out almost everything, uh, but not, ev not everyone, <laughs> and not everything. Uh, it's an act of mercy. It's an act of salvation. It's an act of preservation, preserving the goodness of what he created. He could have just blasted everything. He could have had multiple floods, like, oh, trial and error, oh, I messed up. Whew, let's wipe that again. Okay, but we see in the biblical story that God does not do that. So it rains, the rain is pounding for 40 days and 40 nights, and there's water even coming up from the ground. And then they're in this box, <laughs> this floating temple, for a year, for over a year, these chosen humans and chosen uh, animals, over a year, trusting in God to, to be their salvation. And so this, 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 this is where we, where we find the, the story in, in, in Genesis 9. God makes a promise, a covenant with this family, with the only remaining human beings on this earth. They don't have to do anything. God makes this promise out of his own mercy and goodness and character. So verse 8, then God says to Noah and to his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature. He's not just making it with the humans, he's making it with every creature. That's amazing. That was with you, the birds. Again, uh, the, the two, the, the male and the female of every animal, the birds, the livestock, all the wild animals and all those that came out of the ark with you. Every living creature on earth, the, the sea has subsided now. And so they're able to come out of the ark, and he's making this covenant. Verse 11, I establish my covenant with you never again. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be, will there be a flood to destroy the earth. Verse 12, and God said, this is the sign this is the sign of the covenant, the promise that I am making between me and you. This is the first covenant that God makes with human beings. Only it's, it's him making the promise. It's him. They, they don't, they're not making a commitment. God's making the commitment. He's reaching out his hand first without anyone making a deal with him. I'm making this covenant with you and every animal, every creature with you, and a covenant for all generations, all generations to come. I have set my rainbow 
Um, so other translations, you'll probably read bow. Uh, the Hebrew word that's used here is, word, is a word for bow, like an archer's bow. That was one of my favorite activities at SEP camp, archery, yes. <laughs> it's a bow, a bow in the clouds, and it will be the sign of the promise that I make between me and all of creation. Wow. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, that means it was, it's raining, but it's also sunny. That's probably, prob anyway, they probably saw that while, while they were on the ark. Um, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Verse 16, when the bow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting, this a forever, forever promise between God and everything that he created of every kind on earth. So God said to Noah, this is a sign of the covenant that I've established, again, with me and all life on the earth. So a bow in the sky, what, is a, what does a rainbow look like? So next picture, please. Whenever you're able to. Um, what does a rainbow look like? Does it look like this? Is it upside down? This is one of, I, I visited this in San Francisco, represent. <laughs> this is, I think, Cupid's, Cupid's span, I think, um, the sculptor, as I left my heart in San Francisco. So that's it's so clever, right? But it, that's an archer's bow. I know. <laughs> it's real. It's a real sculpture. But <laughs> it's not a real arrow, bow and arrow. <laughs> but does the bow look like this? A rainbow? No. It looks like, next picture, it's like this, right? So when you're with the bow, if you've ever done archery before, where is the arrow pointing? So when you see a rainbow, picture an actual archery bow and arrow, because this is ancient times too, where there was a lot of war and violence. Where is the arrow pointing to? Heaven. To God. I, did, I learned that this week. This is amazing. Oh my goodness. God is saying that a time will come when punishment will not come down upon the earth, but will fall upon God himself. He has been pierced for our transgressions. Oh my gosh, it's just, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. At first, of all, what does a rainbow have to do with Jesus? But now <laughs> I'm getting, the bow is a sign of his covenant. It, it's all about me, me God, God, God preserving everything and everyone, all the undeserving, not people who, who defy him, who, people who hate him, people who don't even know him, people who choose to, to live apart from him, people who don't care to know him, even, even animals who probably are not, are, are not smart enough to know this God, God, the creator. He, it falls upon him in a supreme act of mercy. Jesus is the fulfillment of the promise made with the rainbow back in Genesis. Back in Genesis. On the cross, Jesus, God, God, Father, Son, Spirit, in the, the God-man, the person, the Son of God, of Jesus of Nazareth, who was more than a mere mortal, He's the son of God himself. God, oh my goodness, on the cross, he, the punishment that we deserved fell upon God himself instead of us. And I want to read from Isaiah 53, verse 5. That's, that's what God was um, prophesying. He was prophesying about himself. Isaiah 53, verse 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He struck himself, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace with God was on him and by his wounds we are healed. So the next time we see a rainbow, who do we think of? <laughs> Jesus and the heart of our God. Whew. 
God's purpose for the world is for his image to cover. He wants his image. <sighs> when we hear about the story of, of God sacrificing himself to save us from ourselves, to save us from, from the power, the slavery of sin, what was Elijah and uh, Jesus and, and Moses talking about on the Mount of Transfiguration? We talked about that last week. In, in the Gospel of Luke, they talk about Jesus' exodus. We just heard, heard about the historical exodus of, of, the, of, of the Africans and the blacks, their exodus. But Jesus' exodus, our exodus as a humanity, we need freedom from this slavery that, of, that is the inward turn of the human heart that we, no matter how hard we try, cannot on our own have freedom from. I cannot have freedom on my, in my own power from my shame. I cannot have freedom from my self-loathing from my hatred towards myself and towards other people. I cannot forgive in my own strength. I need freedom from this sin, from this inclination to have everything be about me. I cannot do it on my own. I need freedom. I need an exodus from here. I need a way out. Jesus provides that way out because he was tempted in every way, yes, but he never gave in. He was and is the glory of God that we were made to be, but failed to be. But he provides the way out. He is the exodus from sin, from spiritual darkness, from spiritual death into a new way of life. And the only way that we can be living, if we're going to be living together forever. So in this season of Easter preparation, or just like in the season of Advent, we had four weeks, four weeks to prepare to make room for Jesus, <laughs> to make room in our hearts, in our lives, for the coming of the Son of God, freedom. So in these 40 days, we, we already started just on, on Wednesday this past week, 40 days, not including Sundays, because Sundays are feasting days. Sundays are days that we celebrate the resurrection because the resurrection happened on the first day of the week, on Resurrection Sunday. So every Sunday, even, even apart from the Lenten season, every Sunday is like a mini Easter. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> every Sunday we get to celebrate the truth and the reality of our resurrection power, of our resurrection life in Christ, the new creation. So one of the ways that um, Christians all, all throughout history, this, this is an ancient tradition adopted by Christians who want more than anything to follow this Jesus, to follow this way of Jesus. And one of the ways that it's, uh, some of the ways that it's been practiced, practiced is by prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. There's different ways to fast. It's not just um, just fasting uh, for just water and, and, and food, there, but there's different things that we can fast from. Uh, there's also almsgiving, giving to the poor. Uh, one of the things that I experienced uh, this week, it was actually on Ash Wednesday, um, I volunteered for the first time with uh, our assistant, one of our assistant pastors, Ezer. Uh, he has been uh, volunteering at Shepherd's Pantry, praying for uh, the families and the vehicles who line up every Wednesday and Thursday evening to receive the food donations that the pantry offers. And this are, these are people from all walks of life. Anyone, it's free. Anyone can go. Anyone can go. And I, I don't mean to put Ezra on the spot, but I'm going to put Ezra on the spot. <laughs> I saw Jesus in Ezra this week. And I look forward to, I look forward to coming Wednesday. And it's rain or shine. I want to go even when it's raining. 
I, and it was just the two of us going to each car. We were, we, uh, the pantry provides Bibles in different languages. Uh, there's a Japanese New Testament, there's Mandarin Bibles, there's uh, Bibles in English and Spanish. And well, we had English and Spanish Bibles. And the first lady that we prayed for, she was Spanish speaking. And I could only say that, mi español es un poquito. Um, but Ezra prayed over her. And I was able to pray in English over a Spanish speaking family. Her name is Laura. And they're looking for a new home. Um, seeing when you're meeting new people who just have a need I saw Jesus not only in Ezra but I saw Jesus in, in the eyes and the faces and the lives of each and every one of these people waiting to receive donations in these cars so one of the things that I want to practice during the next six weeks we have six more weeks until Holy Week, um, is giving. Depriving myself of something that I want in order to give to someone who needs it. Isn't that the model of our Lord and Savior, who did not consider equality with God something to be taken to his own advantage, but he who was rich and had everything became poor. We gave up everything because we wanted our own way. We gave it up, but he, he never gave up on us. The end of Psalm 23 says, surely the Lord will pursue me, the goodness and love of the Lord will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I'm seeing the goodness and the love of God pursuing these people. We are sent, I feel sent, for, to these people. So I'm going to go every Wednesday during Lent and probably after Lent. <laughs> and I, I uh, during these next six weeks, I want to organize uh, putting together par care packages. And I, I invite anyone who wants to, <laughs> I will, out of my own pocket, I don't care how much it is, I want to put care packages together for people who are enduring these, these rains who don't have shelter because of a system that is failing them and not providing housing. Anyone, any one of us can find ourselves in that situation. So what do we have that God has given us? Our breath, our energy, our, our life, our, our materials, our, our monies. How does, how does God want us to give back? to pay it forward as he paid his very own life for us. And what stories of transformation are we going to share with each other so that we can, when we gather and then go out because we're energized with what the Spirit is doing in us. Oh, I, I know that God has good, good plans for this congregation and the church as a whole. Good plans for San Gabriel Valley, for Glendora, and wherever. Who is God leading us to? Who and where is God sending us to? That's what I want us to be praying about, especially this Lenten season. So I, I invite you all with me Every Thursday, we have six more Thursdays, including uh, Holy Thursday during Holy Week, Monday, Thursday. The next six Thursdays, I know we just missed this past Thursday, <laughs> but the next six Thursdays, let's choose any time during the day, 10 to 20 minutes of silence and solitude, listening for the Spirit's voice. It could be right when you wake up, it could be right before bed, 10 to 20 minutes, that's all I'm asking. There's something that happens when we choose, at about 15 minutes, when we choose to still our body and our minds long enough to make room for God's voice in our life. I don't know where God is leading us, but I know that he has good plans for us, and it is good. We need his direction. We need his direction, and I want all of us to be listening to the Spirit's voice. So the next six weeks, can we do that? <laughs> 10 to 20 minutes at any time. Find a comfortable chair, sit down, make sure your, your feet are flat on the floor, 
and focus on your breath. And you'll notice right away how busy your mind is <laughs> because we're so used to planning, thinking in the past, thinking in the present. Well, actually not really present, past or future. <laughs> it's so hard to stay in the present. But one of the most effective ways that I've found is to be in, to be in the present is by focusing on the breath. The breath is the only thing that stays constant with us from when we're born until when we die. And that is the same with the presence of God. Focus on the breath and say a breath prayer. Like this morning, I was able to put about 20 minutes aside on the inhale. It could be just a name of God. Lord, on the inhale, Abba, I am here on the exhale. Lord, here I am. And see what happens. <laughs> you may not hear anything, but I want us to be doing this together. Listening to God is one of the highest forms of prayer. We're so used to talking. There's so much noise. Even reading, even reading scripture is a, is a, form, of, a form of noise or, and a form of prayer as well. But listening to God... That's one of the highest forms of prayer. So let us prayerfully discern to whom and to where God is sending us to. As he prepares, he's preparing us for what he has for us. And he wants us to be ready. Both in mind, not moving from the intellectual to the experiential knowledge. He doesn't want us to just be head knowledge. Yes, we are sent. He wants to be experiential knowledge. So that's what, that's what this season is about. Okay. <sighs> so let us it's all about Jesus it's always been about Jesus so for those of you joining us online um, this is our, our time where we reflect on the word the truth that has been revealed to us through the scriptures today and how the symbols of, of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus. <sighs> has, it's, it's all relevant. It's all connected. It all has to do with Jesus and his transformation in and through us. <sighs> so I'll just read the, the same prayer that was read earlier today. I to pray with me. Lord, in Micah 6, 8, you say, O oh, people, Yahweh has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Today, we choose to walk humbly with you. Today, through the Lenten season, and through every day, Lord, through every season of life, we choose to live by your Holy Spirit and to follow your lead. Help us to hear you clearly during the next six weeks and onward. For we do not want to walk by pride or self-sufficiency. We want to walk with you. So let us partake, church family, of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus, broken and shed for all the world, the new creation, Cheers. <laughs> new creation life. Imagine it's glowing light and you're putting in God's light to God's life within you. That empowers us to live sent. God bless you, church. As we go through the next six weeks together preparing for resurrection power on Easter Sunday. Amen. Amen.